Good Friday morning, everyone. How's it going? You know what time it is, or maybe you don't because the timeline got all out of whack this week because of the game being moved, but we are going to be doing Pass... Uh, I almost said Pass Rush Friday. No, we're not going to do that because even though it is Friday, we're going to be doing Personnel Decisions Tuesday. That's right, Personnel Decisions Tuesday on a Friday. So, we're going to go down the list of personnel decisions the team made in the most recent offseason, and we're going to see how the front office did. And obviously we get to view all this stuff through a different lens now that we know that this season is officially toast. But regardless, let's try to be specific. It's easy to say the front office is failing, but I think just saying that is missing a little bit of nuance. How are they failing? What are they failing at? Let's see if we can figure it out. Starting with our free agent re-signings, both the running backs at the top of the list did not play in the most recent game, so nothing new there. Ethan Posick did play. His grade dropped a few points. I didn't notice Posick doing anything over the top bad in that game. Overall, I think the offensive line played fairly well, other than a couple of mishaps by the guards, if anything. But uh, Posick played okay, not great. His he, he is what he is at this point. I think we all know what's up with uh, Posick. Puna Ford played a solid game. He picked up, uh, let's check here, uh, three tackles and a tackle for loss on a, I think it was, what, 37 snaps. So he's having a solid season. His PFF grade still hanging around 70.3. So Puna continues to grind. Now, given the fact that we now know he is not a pass rusher, in any capacity, really. I don't know if we should have given him 10 mil a year, but he's a good player. And um, he is having a good year, despite the fact that he's been kind of put in a position to fail. All right, that brings us to Carlos Dunlap, who had a career game. A career game. He only played, he didn't even play that many snaps. But he had four tackles, including three sacks. And very, very effective, very efficient. His PFF grade dropped, jumped up close to 70 so, I, I, we'll see what happens these next three games, but this is kind of important. Because yes, Dunlap has looked washed up for most of this season, however, we know that we're going to be paying him almost the same amount of money if he's here or not, so he may as well be here. And if I believe I can get a little bit out of him in 2022, then I'm cool with that. But um, I, I need to see more over the next few games, I need to see some reason to believe this was not just a fluke, a one-off. and. I, I, I want to see what happens there for sure. That That's valuable. And Benson Mayo, uh, he didn't play that much and recorded no stats. His PFF grade is still holding at about a 61 and a half, so whatever. Okay, free agent signings and trades. Gerald Everett had a good game, four catches for 60 yards. He caught the only shot play of the game that was actually completed. Now, it was a complete fluke that that pass was completed because it was uh, meant for DK Metcalf, but nevertheless, he played a good game. His catch percentage is back up to 80%. And despite him having the game from hell against the 49ers like a few weeks ago, he's having a good year. These numbers are nice. Let's remember, he's missed two games too. So if we can keep Gerald Everett this offseason, regardless of our plans to keep Wilson, move Wilson, keep Carroll, move Carroll, whatever, I, I think that's good. Gerald Everett's a good player. Um, I'd be excited to see him in a slightly different circumstance. Uh, Gabe Jackson played the full game as he usually does. No sacks allowed, no penalties. I did notice him get uh, pushed around a little bit on a couple of plays, but overall he seems to have held solid. His PFF grade actually went up a little bit to 64. So not a bad game. Um, I, I definitely noticed one or two plays where he was being put on a highlight reel in a negative manner, but not a bad player, not a bad game. So Gabe Jackson continues to grind out a respectable season. No problems there. Al Woods did not have a red-letter game. Uh, he played uh, 40 snaps and registered a, what, what was it, a, a two tackles. No huge plays of note. I think he registered it. I think he might, I think he had a QB hit, which is nice. His PFF grade actually dropped three points, which means that this game was probably actually one of the worst games he played this year, but... Still having a very solid season. Kerry Hyder did not play. Bless you on Austin played a lot of that game, recorded two tackles. 
According to PFF, he didn't allow any catches, but his PFF grade went in the toilet, dropped way down. Um, I know he got docked for that holding call on Cooper Cup that flipped the momentum of the game, but I don't think that can single-handedly be blamed for this. To my eye, as near as I could tell, bless you on Austin, was playing passable football. So don't really know where this comes from. Maybe there's something going on there that you just can't quite see. I know that zone corners do not get their due from PFF. Typically, it's just a... I, I, I don't know what you would call it. It's just like a blind spot for them. But uh, for my money, bless you on Austin, played fine. He continues to be a competent piece on this defense, which is something that I was not expecting. And Sidney Jones. Sidney Jones played the whole game, I think. He picked up a... Uh, Handful of tackles at CEF4, and his PFF grade went up slightly. So I believe Sidney Jones's PFF grade has gone up with every game he's played this year. That streak has not been broken. He he's he's out there doing work. Period. Bottom line. Period. Can't say anything too negative about Sidney right now. Carroll, for whatever I can criticize him for, and I will, has really turned that dude around. All right, that brings us to draft picks and UDFAs, and there isn't going to be a whole lot here. Dwayne Eskridge played a lot. Four targets, zero catches. PFF grade dropped a few points. Um, very disappointing that they weren't able to get him more involved in a meaningful way. Um, I, I, I don't really know what to say about his game. Obviously, he didn't produce, so you can't say it was good. There was that one deep shot to Eskridge that Wilson had where it looked like he had something, but he didn't throw it soon enough. That was frustrating. That could have been a big play, but Eskridge was um, pretty anonymous. And Jake Curhan did not get a lot of PFF love this week. Uh, his grade for that game was like a 51, but i that's not what I saw. What I saw was a player who never at any point did anything to make me mad at him, never made me want to bench him, never made me think, oh, okay, this guy is who I thought he was. So... I'm going to go ahead and say Jake Curhan played good. I, I know PFF will disagree with me on that. They they have uh, been punishing him this whole season with these grades. But to me, Curhan held his own. It wasn't, he's not the greatest player of all time, obviously. He's got some stuff to work on. But I was impressed. I am impressed with Jake Curhan. I like this guy. I want to see where it goes. I, I'm really actually excited to see where this goes. And if he can continue to build on things the way he did in that um, Rams game, we may have ourselves a future starter, which is huge. Okay, that's it. So that brings us to uh, free agency departures. Shaq Griffin, um, not a whole lot to say. His PFF grade actually dropped significantly in this last game. Uh, he had like, I think, five tackles and allowed uh, four completions. And he's playing on a truly awful team where it's hard to evaluate anybody, but he continues to have a fine year. Uh, Jerron Reed played a lot of snaps for the Chiefs in that game against the uh, Chargers on uh, Thursday Night Football. I think it was Thursday Night Football. And he, three tackles, no QB pressure really to speak of, just kind of a whatever game. PFF grade dropped back to 47.2. Still having a pretty forgettable year overall. Uh, K.J. Wright played the whole game for the Raiders against the Browns. The whole game, every snap which is something that is new for him. He's not really been, well, not new for him, I should say, new for him this season. I don't think he had done that yet this year. And he grinded. He had eight tackles, and his PFF grade did drop a few points, probably because your efficiency drops the more you're utilized. But it's good to see KJ getting work, I guess. You know, still like that guy. I support the decision to move on from him, and um, I'm not going to be moved off of that right now. But I like KJ, good to see him getting work, and good to see him putting in work. And Carlos Hyde did not play, and Trey Flowers played six snaps and had like one tackle. PFF grade went up a little bit. That That's really all we got. So um, that's it for the front office decisions Tuesday on a Friday. Overall, there is some stuff to like here. The Gabe Jackson trade was pretty good. The Gerald Everett signing was pretty good. Al Woods, awesome. We're, we're turning um, chicken crap into chicken salad at cornerback right now with guys like uh, Sidney Jones and even Bless You on Austin, I think, is playing okay. Excited about Curhan, but we also saw nothing from any of our draft picks, nothing meaningful from our draft picks in that game. 
Um, we're, we're not seeing a whole lot from some of these guys we re-signed, although in some cases it's because they're not even playing. So, kind of all over the place still. There is some good stuff, some bad stuff overall, just not good enough. Not good enough at all. But that's the uh, full story. I will see you guys later today. Peace out, go Hawks.